What's going on everybody? Welcome to T3G and today we're bringing you another budget build and I'm not going to go through the explanation why we're using the word budget but uh, we are doing another budget build as you can see in the title it is going to be in the thousand dollar range so last time we did 1500 this time we're stepping a little down and going a thousand dollars and uh, yeah really that's about it let's just get right into it by the way Dalboard's right behind me so if you he's saying hi yeah there you go all right, let's go ahead and get right into this. So, starting off, I am going to do two, well, kind of like two builds. I'm going to give you two options on what I would do if I had $1,000. The first one, of course, is the AMD side of things. So, we're going to go ahead and start with the MSI Gaming 970 Gaming Motherboard. Why did they have gaming in there twice? I don't know. And MSI. But regardless, MSI Gaming 970 Motherboard, we love it here. We love MSI, so why not? That's what we would go with. Really, there's no much more explanation to that. Uh, if it's in the price range, yes, the 990 would be technically better if you want to do dual cards. But because you're working with a certain price range, the 970 is where it's at. Now, of course, since we know what motherboard and socket we're using, we're going to go with the 8350. It's basically their best 8-core. You can get the 8370, which I believe is the same price really it's the same thing uh, from what I understand it's just got a higher turbo clock and maybe it's a little more efficient with power but that's about it now the 8350 is a unlock processor so you can technically overclock it and if you are looking to do that we did toss in a better cooler than what the stock box or the stock CPU comes with uh, we tossed in a Ember, Enermax, Enermax 120 millimeter twister aluminum black CPU cooler with a blue LED. This is a very, very highly rated uh, CPU cooler. A lot of people like it. A lot of people enjoy it. They like the fact that it's all black as well. So we definitely toss this in. This will definitely help you overclock a certain amount. Probably not the best overclocking you'll get out of the CPU, but definitely you can overclock with this cooler. Now going from there, the graphics card we're going to use is the Sapphire Nitro, oops, sorry about that, Sapphire Nitro Radeon R9 390. Uh, listen, it's a 390 card, it's not the 390X, so it's a little step bef below it, but the 390X, all it is is it gives you additional megahertz for the core clock and a little more stream processors, but this is an 8 gigabyte card. It's going to do everything you need it to do for gaming and then some. Uh, and really there's nothing much else that needs to be said. Uh, Sapphire cards are Sapphire as a company is a really good company when it comes down to creating cards and yeah that's about it. Next thing we're doing the Mushkin enhanced Blackline 16 gigabyte as I said it before and we said it before that and before that we don't want to recommend less than 16 gigs. There might be rare changes depending on your budget that we might recommend eight, but 16 gigs is definitely going to fall into a thousand dollar budget right absolutely yeah there's really no reason to go any less and as i mentioned before there's plenty of new games that came out at the end of 2015 and games that are going to be coming out that a recommended requirement is 16 gigs minimum requirement is 8 gigs so why not have the better going from there of course is storage now this particular thousand dollar build will only have one set of storage, a 512 gigabyte SSD. Of course, you can spend an additional 50 bucks and get another one terabyte mechanical drive from Seagate, and that'll give you extra storage. The reason we went with the SSD, it's, it's 512 gigs. It'll give you plenty for the OS programs that you might use on the norm and some games. So for that, for now, we'll be doing best for you, and of course, a little bit of maybe music and pictures, as long as you don't have an insane amount of high-res pictures and an insane amount of songs, you should be fine. Like I said, for additional 50, you can add a, ter a terabyte hard drive to this setup. Uh, the reason we go with SSDs is honestly, I don't think neither one of us can go to a regular mechanical drive as a boot drive. What do you think? No, yeah, it's just again. it's way too annoying, way too slow, way too annoying, and we hear it all the time from everybody. <laughs> so that's why we went this, and of course, as previously, Mushkin is a great brand. They've been doing memory, and now they do SSDs, and they do a great job. And of course, what's going to power all this? Well, we went with the Roswell Photon 750. It's a 750 watt full, fully modular power supply, which means no cables, no extra cables. In your case, you can take whatever you don't use and put it in a drawer or something. They don't have to sit in your case and take up room. 
And uh, it's listen, it's eighty plus gold certified, as stated before. You definitely want to make sure that's a that's on there, and because it's modular and seven hundred fifty watts is going to be plenty. Recently, I did mention in the fifteen hundred watt build that yes, I did mention that you might require more wattage uh, for if you add an additional card and decide to overclock and have an additional hard drive. I'm, I might have been, I said a thousand watts would be good. I might have been a little over enthusiastic on that. For the new CPUs from Intel, like the 6700K and the 6600K, you're pretty good with 750, 850 if you're overclocking and have an additional card uh, up to, unless you're getting into the Titan X and the 2011 sockets, then you're going to need about a thousand. But uh, with the 6700K and the 6600K with a 970 or even possibly just a regular 980 but not a 980 Ti, you should be good with 750 or 850. Now, with AMD, because these are older CPUs, they are a little more power hungry, so you might require a little more power. But I, you'll still be plenty... You'll still be able to overclock with the 390 at 750 watts. Rose was a great company. I want to say they're a new egg company. What do you think? It seems like they're a new egg company, but I think Amazon Roswell? carries some Rosewood stuff. No, they're, they're independent. Are they independent? Yeah. Well, whatever. Regardless, Rosewood's been a great company. We love their stealth case. Uh, I have a few of their power supplies, which have been working great, perfectly, doing whatever they need, and they have great ratings online, so you can't beat that. And, of course, the case we're going to go with... Yes, absolutely. The Rosewell Stealth Mid Tower Gaming Case has got plenty of room uh, to fit in that cooler, to fit everything that you need, and especially, especially if you're like me and you like to have a thousand hard drives in your case, this has the room to do it. Uh, we did not include an optical drive with this because a lot of people don't care for an optical drive. There's plenty of other ways to install the OS without an optical drive. You can always get an external optical drive. Uh, we did not include an OS because there are plenty of different ways to get different kinds of operating systems depending on what you want uh and yeah and obviously no keyboard mouse or monitor that would be an additional purchase so that is the amd side of things for eight thousand dollars that actually total comes out to what all that comes out to thousand sixteen ninety two so just a little over a thousand now going into the next one oh that's not what we want is of course the Intel side of things. So we went with an 1151 socket. Uh, it's the Z170 chipset. I don't like to do anything under Z170. So like the H170, I believe it is, or 110. I'm not sure. Can't remember right now. I don't like to go with those other items because they are lower end motherboards. So they don't allow you to be able to manipulate like the CPU and stuff like that for overclocking. So I go with the Z170 chipset. Asus Rock is a great company. I mean, they, you know, it's their reviews are mixed, but everybody that uses them or reviews them always seems to give, uh, or at least professionally, should I say, not uh, customer wise. Customer wise, their reviews are mixed, but when professionals review them on forums, on videos, they seem to have really good luck with them and they seem to do a really, really good job. So definitely went with the AS Rock. It fits in the budget of the $1,000, so that's another reason we went with it. And the orange, uh, orange black look is not too bad. I always prefer all black motherboards just because then you can mess with the color scheme. But orange and black, it's not bad. You can go with an orange and black scheme. If you don't care, then you don't care. Of course, now for the CPU, we did have to go with the 6600K. And as you can tell, it's about a $100 difference between the 6600K i5 processor than it is of the AMD 8350. Now, of course, this is obviously, it's better, it's more efficient, it's faster, um, just because it is a newer is a new CPU, so it's going to have better technology. It's going to have a better better setup. But it is only a quad-core. It does not have hyper-threading, but it's still, I would say, still definitely outperforms the 8350 on most things. It, the 8350 might still do better on certain, like, rendering and stuff like that, but this is still a perfect processor, especially for gaming, and you can still definitely do editing and stuff like that on it. Um, it is a K, so it is overclockable. You can get that 3.5 up to even potentially 4. Point, up to 4.5 with no problem at all. 
these these processors definitely do like to overclock. Now, of course, for the card, since we're sticking with Intel, I figured why not an in, or an NVIDIA card instead of an AMD. So something equivalent to the 390, we went with the 970. Zotac is a great company. All these companies essentially are overall great companies. I mean, they're using what NVIDIA already provides and add their own heat sticks and coolers so they really can't go wrong. It's a 4 gigabyte card instead of an 8 gigabyte card. That is the one advantage that uh, AMD does have. It does have more RAM on these cards. But when you come to, when it comes down to performance, they seem to be overall fairly neck and neck on a similar system setup. But really, there's nothing much else to say. It's a 4 gigabyte GeForce 970 card. Honestly, that's that's basically it. NVIDIA is a great company. They make great cards. And honestly, if you are to compare the best AMD card with the best NVIDIA card, obviously NVIDIA wins. But there is a price difference. So always keep that in mind when you're trying to have that discussion slash argument. And of course, going next, no, I don't care if you're a tech expert. No, thanks. And going after that... With the RAM, we did 16 gigs, of course, as always. DDR4 RAM, 3200 megahertz. You don't need 3200 megahertz. You don't need 16 gigs. Yes, we said it. We don't recommend if you can afford this money. We don't recommend another 16 gigs. And yeah, will most of you not necessarily use the 3200 megahertz in most situations? Most likely, but why not have the better, especially when it's almost the same price as like the... 2400 megahertz or the 2800 megahertz so why not get the 3200 megahertz and uh with the case we went with the stealth case that i showed you already the same uh we did the same power supply the rosewell photon and uh the same cooler and the same ssd hard drive from mushkin so really all that at the end will stay the same and the total price it looks like i didn't add the card to the cart so let's see here the total price on this did it add? did it add? yeah it added oh maybe it did there we go the total price on this is going to be thousand seventy seven ninety two. so just a little more then the AMD, a little over that $1,000 budget. But honestly, this is the best way to go. If you're able to spend $1,000, spend just that little more to get all these items. And this is probably going to be your best bet to go with. If you like AMD, go with the AMD. If you like Intel and NVIDIA because you heard Intel and NVIDIA are better, but you that's all you know, then go with this setup. Either one is going to be a perfect pick for whatever you need it to do. Overall, it's got plenty of room to upgrade on both systems if you wanted to. If you need an additional card or more hard drive space, the case definitely allows it as well. And if I was to recommend anything differently, is instead of the heat sink, go with a water cooling setup like from Corsair, like the H90 or the H100 or something like that. Of course, NZXT, I believe, makes one as well. Uh, they all do and they virtually all make the same thing so that's it guys that's our that's our build budget build of a thousand dollars i hope you guys enjoyed it we will be doing more of these because once again as stated before it is tax season time so people are going to have money potentially money that they want want to spend either on upgrading a system or building a brand new system so this is what we recommend for $1,000. Make sure you subscribe and leave down in the comments on maybe what you would choose differently. Uh, maybe you pick something different, different brand, different company. But remember, it better fit in that $1,000 price. But let us know down below and we'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces!